One of the exciting but also challenging aspects of sustainability is that this is a totally new way of framing the problems. And so nobody's an expert. I believe that those folks who say we can't address this problem, that it's going to be too expensive, that it's going to hurt the economy, have a profoundly pessimistic view about human creativity, about our capacity to work together for the greater good and for future generations. The fact that we have scientists and engineers working together with management people and urban planners and economists and public policy people it really brings together sort of a, a fantastic interdisciplinary group of students who are passionate about these things and who are really ready to engage in a hands-on way. So the way we define sustainability is an opportunity to transform organizations, communities, and the world. Dwindling oil supplies, carbon emissions, climate change. These are tremendous global problems which come together in one concept, sustainability. The question of how to meet today's needs without compromising future generations' abilities to meet their own needs. Sustainability has become a central question, a guiding principle, and even a buzzword all over the world. With so many organizations and individuals working on sustainability initiatives, it's worth asking, what can MIT bring to the table? We don't see sustainability merely as a threat or a challenge or a constraint, but rather as an incredible opportunity. And it's an opportunity not just for new businesses, but for existing enterprises to reinvent their practices. To develop a method which really makes sense from the MIT point of view. Uh, when we first started this, there was a debate. Should we essentially set some guidelines to say MIT would reduce the CO2 footprint by X percent in 20 years or 30 years. Uh, and when we started looking at it and talking to people and talking among ourselves, it's obvious we don't know what the answer to that is because we don't know what's really practicable. So the rational approach and the approach we took is to say, well, let's start out by doing some demonstration projects at a modest level. For example, relighting of the Stata Center to solve some of the problems of inefficient lighting that was initially installed. Do those projects, do a before and after measurement of actually how much energy was being used before, how much energy did we save after, and some careful uh, counting of how much did it really cost. Why are we doing that? Because there are a lot of people out there saying, well, some of the conservationist estimate is really just blowing smoke on it what the really return is. In the spirit of walking the talk, MIT has been doing as much as possible to ensure that the new buildings on campus are as environmentally friendly as possible. When students work on campus projects, it is an incredible learning experience. This is what it is that MIT was started to do. The idea that we bring together both the theoretical knowledge and the experiential knowledge that comes of actually trying to do something. Students were monitoring the use of energy in the chemistry building and they set up cameras so that they could see whether or not the lights were on all night and they went around and they turned off all the lights and they still couldn't get the energy to go down and then they realized that all the fume hoods were left open and that it was a behavioral aspect. The MIT Generator is a semesterly event which brings students and faculty together to find ways to make campus more environmentally sustainable. The energy and excitement in the room is incredible as students not only come to listen to faculty members about how best to make campus more sustainable, but are actively engaged by pitching their own ideas and then forming breakout groups to think about ways that they can actually implement and execute on their ideas. The idea of student brigades that the retrofit group does just are basically we go to facilities and sort of come up with some projects that really need some manpower and then we get a group of students to come together and sort of learn a task and then go and actually do the retrofit. So facilities excited because they're getting extra hands and MIT students are excited because they're learning how to tinker with some more stuff on campus. And the whole vision is to try to turn MIT's campus into a learning laboratory for energy, environment, and sustainability. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, integrating sustainability into the curriculum on campus so that students now and in the future 
can learn through all of their classes. There are a number of courses. Some are very wide courses, which are sort of survey courses, which talk about policy issues. Others are ones that look at what are the, the possible sources in the future for renewable energies and clean energy. In the Sloan core, there are now a number of modules and cases that people are including in that specifically address sustainability. So in sustainability, what we're talking about is the really broad definition, the social, economic, and environmental aspects all together as complex, integrated, dynamic systems. As we look to the future, there may be nothing more important for all of us than meeting the sustainability challenge. We need to move forward with a spirit of optimism, hope, and innovation. And in the end, that spirit might be the most important thing that MIT has to offer. If we transform this place, if we make MIT into the future, then we can really help to send those ripple effects out into the media, out into other institutions, um, into industrial campuses. I think it's an exciting time. I think that we're hoping that we have our alumni join us on this journey that we're going on for the, in the whole MIT community of what is it we can be doing, how can we be doing it effectively. The more people that get involved, the faster we'll all move forward.